with opening comments. Uh, I'm going to start here with Marco, uh, Marco Caceres, who is Senior Analyst and Director of Space Studies at the Teal Group. Uh, he's the creator and the lead analyst for the World Space Systems Briefing uh, and a former editor from Jane's. And I know we had uh, Pat Host from Jane's here. I don't know if he's still here, uh, but so some, some Jane's alum, uh, alumnus. Uh, and uh, Marco, I'd be interested in, in your take. You've been an analyst watching this space for a very long time, both the satellite side and the launch side. Uh, and I'd be interested in your take on where this market stands, uh, what are some of the trends and the niches, and what might that tell us about, um, uh, about how this, this market could serve the Department of Defense and some of these national security applications. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Marco Caceres. Uh, I've been with the Teal Group for about a quarter of a century now. Um, we've been, um, our, our company analyzes markets and industries, primarily in the aerospace and defense area. Um, uh, my colleagues analyze missiles, aircraft, drones. I just happen to do launch vehicles and satellites. Uh, this this uh, expected boon in the market for, uh, for satellites and, and launch services is kind of what we've been waiting for, what I've been waiting for for the last 20 years. Um, we thought it was going to come back in the 1990s when you saw the, um, the Iridiums and the Global Stars and the Orbcoms and others uh, and the, um, the Teledesics that never happened. Uh, we thought it was going to happen in the uh, early part of the last decade when you saw all these proposed big, big broadband geostationary communication satellites uh, being proposed. None of that happened. Um, well, some, let me correct mine. Some of that happened. Uh, Iridium, Global Star, Orbcom, they all happened. Uh, but the companies that you see in charge of that, uh, those systems now, uh, didn't exist back then. Those companies, those first generation companies, they went bankrupt because none of those systems uh, cost what they uh, were expected to cost in terms of developing, building, and launching them. They were much, much more expensive. So, for example, Iridium that was projected to cost a uh, billion dollars, a system of uh, 66 operational satellites at Leo, uh, low Earth orbit, ended up costing over $5 billion. So when I, when I hear uh, either NASA or the U.S. military or any commercial company talk about um, the cost of their satellite or their launch vehicle uh, or, their, uh, or their constellations, I automatically multiply that cost by a factor of five or ten. Um, five at least for the commercial companies and ten for almost every government program. If you look at uh, U.S. military satellite programs that are still in the pipeline and have been in the pipeline for ten years, fifteen years, uh, they're all over budget. Uh, they're all uh, facing cost overruns, uh, significance in some cases um, by 100 percent, 150 percent, 200 percent. So um, with that, I think it's important to, uh, when, when you look at these forecasts, be it the ones we do or the ones um, CSIS does, for the numbers of satellites that are being proposed to be built or that will be uh, built and launched over the next five to 10 years, and the number of launch missions that it'll take to get them up to orbit, um, you have to be very skeptical about these forecasts because they really are uh, educated guesstimates, certainly from five to 10 years out, and given um, how new this potential market is, even from one to five years out, um, is, is something you really need to be very careful about. Uh, we don't know a lot about these systems. We don't know, for example, much about SpaceX's 4,600 satellite constellation. Um, we don't know where they're going to get their money. We know they have some fairly deep pockets, but we also know they have a lot of debt. Um, they're, they're partnering with Google. That's good news. Google has a lot of money. Um, we don't know whether there's enough of a, of a market for that size of a constellation and the one being proposed by OneWeb and the one being proposed by Boeing and a dozen or more other ones. They're targeting the same, pretty much the same markets. So um, I'll leave you with that. Just be a little skeptical when you see these forecasts. You know, uh, reminds me, of course, the famous Yogi Berra line about you know, predictions are, uh, are tricky even about the future. Uh, I, I like to supplement that as someone who looks at a lot of data that is past looking, which is to say it's actually awfully hard to predict the past, too. Uh, it's awfully hard to look at data and figure out if you can say with clarity what really happened, even in the past. So it is a tricky business for sure. Uh, 